welcome back to Michelle Reads and Vlogs and today we are looking at my wrap up for February. So in February I read seven books in total or I should say I finished seven books in total. This was a weird reading month. So I completed seven books. Out of those books two of them were ebooks, three were physical and two were audiobooks and this is the first kind of way it goes a bit weird. I had five three star reads and two four star reads. What an average month. <laughs> I just wanted something amazing to come along and we're going to talk about this but it kind of only half happened. Out of everything I read I did read, or out of the books I finished, I read a total of 2010 pages. So the month started with me reading an e-arc for NetGalley and that was A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. This is where it's a bit weird because this is the book that I did not finish and to be honest I think it's going to be a five star. So let me tell you the story. I obviously got this as an ER through NetGalley as already mentioned but it was a bit late, it was a bit random, it just kind of come through last minute. You know it's got a couple of w weeks until it's released, it's released right now as I'm filming and you're watching this video. So I kind of put it into my my reading when I could fit it in and I was really enjoying it. So for anyone who doesn't know this is meant to be for fans of Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. We have got these characters who are kind of like an unlikely group of people getting together. It's based in like I think it's meant to be an old school version of London-ish kind of and we've got this group of young characters or mostly young characters and they are going to go and do a heist and the characters are brilliant, the interactions between the characters are brilliant. Things that Hafsa Faisal brings into the writing even though we've got this, it's YA as well so it's very fast paced, very action packed, all of these characters are very likeable, we get to know them very quickly but she still manages to get in some really kind of heavy topics so things like colonialism, I'm not very good at saying that word, so the main character she has come from a country that has been colonised by what I can't remember the name of the country they're in but obviously it's representing countries that used to colonize other countries and just how that kind of affected her and her family I just thought it's absolutely brilliant. Should have said again as well the main plot of this is the idea that the main character she runs this tea room in the day where they literally will serve tea and then at night it turns into a like a blood cafe. I've forgotten all of the keywords because it's been like almost a month since I've I've read the the beginning of this. So it's like a blood cafe where the vampires can go to with consent drink blood and they are basically trying to hide that fact from the authorities. And then I can't even really remember the reason why they have to go on this heist. It's something to do with saving the cafe though, where most of these characters work and their livelihoods are. And it was so good. And I got to page 211 of just over 300, I think. I, they were just kind of gearing up to get ready to go on this heist. And my copy of the ebook corrupted. <laughs> so all I've got on my iPad, if I try and go on, the app onto that page is just a white page and the whole app freezes. I can't even come off the book. So I got in touch with NetGalley as you would because I'm like oh my gosh I need to read the rest of this book it's so good and there's nothing they could do because the book had been archived so I couldn't send my feedback for that yet and you might think well it's out now so why haven't you you bought a copy. Money is I'm not going to say tight at the moment but I'm being really careful with what I spend my money on and I know that we are getting a copy of this in a book box next month in March. So I've told myself that I can't have two copies of the book, I've got to wait for my book box copy to come and I'm so excited. As I said at the moment I'm pretty sure it's going to be a five star and I, I really want to finish it. So a bit of a random bond that we're starting on a book I haven't finished yet but it is a DNF book as soon as I get my hands on that book, out of that book box, <laughs> I am reading it. I cannot wait. So would massively recommend, as I've said, it's out now if anyone is interested. So the first book that I actually finished in February was An Education in Malice and this is by S.T. Gibson. It was another e-arc I'd got through NetGalley which is why I got them kind of read at the beginning of the month because I knew I had to hit the deadlines before they were released. Again I think this is out now as we're 
filming this as you're watching it I think it came out halfway through the month and this one's kind of on me so this is a dark academia turns out I don't think I like dark academia <laughs> so totally my fault but you know you have to give things a go to know if you're gonna like them or not so this is a an, an academic rivals so this girl laura she starts at a, a college saint perpetua's college and there there is this amazing tutor i think she's all about poetry and literature but mainly poetry and she goes to this college because the tutor there is amazing and laura's very talented so she gets in even though it's quite like prestigious to do so and to get into the class she's like the only younger person in the college in the class but there is another person in the class who is also very talented and is a bit of the teacher's pet and she's called Carmilla so we get this rivalry between Laura and Carmilla and then as the story gets on they become more than friends or they become friends then there's obviously attraction there so they become more than friends but very interesting kind of what happens along the way and Carmilla has this already kind of inappropriate relationship with the professor the teacher and it becomes very strange and as I said I guess it's me I guess I don't really like many books that are set in academia and also I wasn't a fan of the darker side of it I was really grateful that in the front of the book there was a whole list of trigger warnings and I would say that if this is your kind of thing you probably know what you're letting yourself in for with a dark academia obviously I didn't but check the trigger warnings so I thought it was okay I gave it three stars what I really liked about it because I don't know if I've just kind of made it sound a bit negative the writing the writing was beautiful so as these people are all meant to be poets you know they're meant to love their writing and their literature st gibson it was like poetic itself even when they weren't in class and talking about poetry and literature st gibson was amazing amazing that the writing in that book i would definitely give another st gibson a go if she writes non dark academia if she writes in other genres which i think she does i'm not 100 percent. then yeah i'm gonna give it a go because beautiful and i think yeah if dark academia is your thing you should you should give it a read but yeah unfortunately not for me i didn't enjoy it i wasn't you know rushing to pick it up it was a yeah a bit of a strange one then we have the first physical read of the book which is called uh, of the book of the month this other eden by paul harding and this was the winner of the pulitzer prize and also it was shortlisted for the booker prize it was one of the last ones and this book is about an island set just off the main coastland in a part of america where a few generations ago two people settled one was from africa i think they were nigerian i'm gonna have to double check this american bantu igbu yeah igbu so that's kind of like around the nigeria area i think correct me if i am wrong there and the woman is from ireland and they settle there and they have offspring and over the generations what happens is there is some interbreeding with the offspring and because there was a lot of inbreeding on this island, there are a lot of range of the type of people who live on here. So some of the people and some of the children are very academically gifted. So there's one young boy who's an amazing painter and there's one girl who is brilliant at maths. And then I think there's another one who was Latin, like she's really good Latin skills. But there's also a lot of people on this island who have very little academic abilities and very little social abilities as well. And what happens is basically people come to the island to kind of look at these people and judge that they shouldn't be living here the way that they are and that they need to be civilized so for example one of the men like lives in a tree like not under a tree in a tree in a tree trunk and a lot of the the kind of civilized people from the mainland just don't agree with it so they come to basically move them off the island so what we get here is a lot of the stories from the older generation but basically what's happening now on the island there's this teacher who comes every summer and kind of helps to to teach in the little school that they build there and and he tries to save one of the islanders so he basically chooses the one with the lightest skin who can pass as white 
and sends them off to go and live with a wealthy friend to get them off the island through all of this because he can't help them all like this is happening and I found this really heart-wrenching really heart-wrenching I feel like the author did a brilliant job of us liking the characters getting to know the characters rooting for them and then basically getting to the point where they're going to be displaced from the only home and life they've ever known and I knew that this was gonna kind of get me straight from reading the synopsis and I, I did I thought it was absolutely brilliant so I did give this one four stars it was one of my two four stars of the month but as usual after I read it I went on to Goodreads just to have a look at what other people were saying and a lot of the lower rated uh, ratings <laughs> from this book were from people who know where the island that this was based on so apparently it is based on a true story and a lot of the people with the low star reviews were saying how Paul Harding did not paint the correct picture of what happened on this island and, and the people and he almost dumbed them down more than what they were and with that I, I kind of had this kind of very long mental conversation with myself I don't know if other people do this where I thought but it's only based on a true story and I think when you write a book and it's based on a true story it's well how far do you think that the truth sits between what actually happened in the story it could be based on a true story just the fact that there was an island of people and yeah <laughs> they, they, they lived there and they were seen as uncivilized but a lot of the people who gave it low reviews were almost saying you know it's not like that at all and actually it was an island of fishers and they had boats yeah I think it's very interesting when you read that something is based on a true story take it with a pinch of salt because it's still fiction if you want the truth and the facts go and read the non-fiction but I thought it was good so happily gave this four stars we then have the second book in the um, Molly the Maid series this is the mystery guest by Nita Prose and this book carries on with Molly it's a few years later from the first book what happens is an author comes into the hotel to do a talk on their book they're very notorious for not giving talks and they're a very popular author and whilst they're in the hotel about to give some information about their new book they drop dead <laughs> in the hotel in front of all of the the press the the guests their fans yeah they drop dead so we are following molly as she tries to uncover what's happened because it turns out she knew the man before this is not the first time she's ever met him and none of this is a spoiler by the way it is all in the synopsis and what I would say about this is I was a bit disappointed and again not really a spoiler because it happens from very early on we find that her partner is not here during this book he is away visiting his family from I can't remember where they're from but another country so Molly is kind of on her own and yeah I kind of missed not seeing the other character I suppose it meant that we got a lot more of kind of Molly's internal dialogue and it does kind of go between timelines so we see a lot of her going back to her youth where her grandmother is still alive and that's kind of half the story and with this one I guess I think the charm of the first book wore off on me so Molly is neurodivergent and I loved that rep about her she is very literal and I love that because I'm quite literal it's very weird I can give sarcasm but I don't understand it as much and I love that she was just like the epitome of literal on the scale I really liked her kind of personality and how she was portrayed in the first one and I think in the second one it almost just it you know it wasn't new anymore it wasn't unique so it it was okay you know I, I feel like sometimes when I give things a three star I gave this a three star I downplay it a bit because I didn't think it was amazing but yeah it was still good I enjoyed it I felt like the ending was very weird not necessarily the ending of the book and kind of tying up the what had happened with 
the author who had died. I thought that that was done well. But at the very end, we've got the epilogue, which is almost more of a shocker than the entire rest of the story. I was literally, I read the story and went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Epilogue, I went, oh my gosh, oh my days. And I just kind of, I don't know where it's going with that. I don't know if it was necessary. I'd be really interested to see what other people think. Um, so if you've read it, let me know. What did you think of the kind of jaw dropping moment at the very end? But yeah, I thought it was good. If you liked the first one, read this one. If you didn't like the first one, I wouldn't give it a go. I don't think it's got much more to offer. The first one was definitely better. Next, we have another ebook that I got an e-arc of from NetGalley, and this was called The Waves Take You Home by Maria Alejandra Barrios Velez. This was one that was completely a cover click. I thought that the cover was beautiful. This was also at the point where I hadn't been accepted for any books that you have to apply for. So this was just on the the list of read now so books that you can just say yeah I want to read that and you get instantly approved for it. So I liked the cover so I, I'd clicked on it a few months ago and I was like okay time's coming up I'm, I'm gonna have to read this one as well. I actually quite enjoyed it and I don't know why that shocks me why because you know there, there are books that are you know you're pre-approved for but I really enjoyed it. So this follows a young girl. Again, I've forgotten her name. I'm terrible with the names. So she is this late 20s. She grew up in Colombia and then at like the age of 18, her grandmother basically shipped her off to New York and was like, you're going to get this better life, a better life than we've had. Go and improve yourself. And then she's lived in New York for 10 years and kind of, you know, flown home a few times within that time. But we meet her at kind of late 20s when she has to go home. I'm not going to say why because I don't think it's in the synopsis. So she kind of has to very quickly pack up her things, go home for a few weeks and help to save the restaurant that her family have owned in Colombia for her whole life. But she's torn because back in New York, she's got her boyfriend who she's pretty sure she's going to stay with and end up marrying and being with forever. And so we've got this kind of torn between two different places and where she calls home and where she's going to be called to and what she should do for the best. So I thought that the author did this kind of idea of living in limbo they did it so well so our girl I've completely forgotten her name so our girl V she is not sure what to do and she has to figure it all out like we all do in our 20s at some point and I just thought the author did that brilliantly this kind of idea of a person living in limbo and not knowing what to do best for their life and for everything that's going on around them and where they should be and where their home is because she's got two places that she calls home and yeah I thought it was brilliant I did give it three stars one of the reasons being that some of the things the characters did in this book were shocking they are owning a restaurant they are running a restaurant and they know very little about business and how to do things and it was infuriating like absolutely infuriating and I don't like it when books annoy me because the characters annoy me. But it did make up for it. I loved the setting. I loved all of the talk about food. If you are a foodie, this book could be for you. So yeah, I gave it three stars and I absolutely would recommend. Um, Yeah, for anyone who's not read a book set in Colombia before, I think this was my first. And yeah, I really enjoyed it for that reason. I then listened to Rogue Protocol, which is the third book in the Murderbot series by Martha Wells. So I listened to this on audio as I have with all of the other books in this series and I do with a lot of sci-fi. And this was the second four star read of the month. So Murderbot is the name that I think he calls himself or sorry, they call themselves. There's no gender, I don't think, with any of this. So it's the, the name that they've given to themselves. They are an android. So they are kind of like a robot, but they have some human kind of integrated tissues and things within their body. Murderbot used to be owned by a company. They would be sent out on missions and things to basically protect 
humans. So kind of like bodyguards and yeah, protection. And I can't obviously let you know what's happened in the first two books, but basically in this book, they are going back to the setting of the first book, almost to figure out what really went on there. So they get back to the same place, they meet new characters along the way, and I just really enjoy listening to these. They're very quick, they're very fast-paced. I think in terms of pages, it's 150 pages if you read it in the actual book, they're absolutely tiny. But I love Murderbot, like the fact that they are a machine but they're so human-like in their qualities and their thoughts, it really holds a mirror up to humanity and at the same time they're quite quirky and fun which is so strange seeing as they're a murder bot. They love TV and watching serials on TV and consuming that kind of content. Yeah, awesome. I'm definitely going to move on to book number four. I then read Let Us Descend by Jasmine Ward and this is a book about slavery. There's no other kind of real way to kind of bluntly put that. It is a literary fiction. We are following this young woman who I completely have forgotten her name, Annis. So we're following her from as a child when she still lived with her mother and they were slaves in one person's house to watching her mother be taken away and then finally what happens to her and how she is taken from the house that she grew up in as well and sold. And I was ready to have my heart ripped out by this. So obviously it's a really big book at the moment. People have really hyped it up. They People think that this is incredible. I've heard so many good things and I was ready to bawl like a baby. But it just wasn't for me. And it's so difficult to talk about a book about slavery and be like, oh, I didn't like it. So I thought the kind of bare bones of the story were very interesting. So Anna's is kind of her journey, talking about the journey of her grandparents and how they got to America. I thought the story bit of it was really interesting. And that's why I read it. I'm a plot reader. But this includes a lot of magical realism. So there are a lot of spirits in this, spirits of the land, spirits of past family members, spirit of the water, some other things as well. And it just wasn't for me. I don't think, even though I like fantasy, I didn't like the magical realism in this. Also, I did find, and again, this is such a difficult thing to say because it's a book about slavery. It was very one note. It was very just tragic, 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 tragic. And of course it's going to be, because as I've said three times already, it's a book about slavery. But there were a couple of hints of better moments and I just didn't feel like there was any roller coaster. It was just all kind of on one level and just didn't grab me. I did not want to keep reaching for this. This was one that I listened to on audio. I was going to do immersive reading with audio and obviously reading with my eyeballs and I just I couldn't even bring myself to keep wanting to listen to the audio. I was like I just don't want to and maybe that's a bit on me because I didn't want to listen to something that was so depressive as well because obviously it's a book about slavery if you didn't hear me say that five times already. Yeah I think just not for me and maybe not for me right now. Maybe if I'd read it at a different point in time I might have felt a little bit different but yeah the delivery just wasn't for me but the story was good. As I said I gave it three stars. I liked it. I just wanted to love it and I didn't and that's a shame. And the final book that I read in February was Big Swiss by Jen Beagin. And this I had heard so many good things about. And again, I just thought this was okay. <laughs> it's really my February overall, isn't it? So Big Swiss, we are following a girl and names, I forget all the time, Greta. So Greta is a transcriber and she is transcribing audio from 
sex therapy sessions. So Om is the sex therapist. He wants to write a book or something. So Greta is working for him, transcribing the audio from his sessions. And through the audio, she meets Big Swiss. This is what she has nicknamed her because she doesn't know her name. So she's Swiss, <laughs> she's from Switzerland. So she nicknames her Big Swiss and she gets to know Big Swiss through these sessions that she's having with Om. And then unexpectedly one day she meets her, she bumps into her in the dog park. They both have dogs, which obviously is the colour. And they become friends. Big Swiss has no idea that Greta is transcribing her sessions and that she knows more about her than what Big Swiss knows about Greta. And I'm not going to talk more about this because I don't want to spoil the plot for anyone who wants to read it, but this book does involve cheating. So Big Swiss is married, Big Swiss and Greta. I might put a big spoiler sign up here for anyone who doesn't want to hear this. Big Swiss and Greta, they have an affair. Greta's life is a hot mess. She is an absolute state. She is an older lady. I say older. She's probably in like her 50s or something. And Big Swiss is younger. She's in her 20s. And Greta is just a mess. An absolute... Oh. One thing I felt about this is that I did not like any of the characters. I did not like Greta. I did not like Big Swiss. I didn't like Arm. I didn't like Greta's housemate. I didn't like Big Swiss's husband. They were all not very nice human beings. And I think I didn't realise that that's meant to be the point of it until I, as usual, looked at other people's Goodreads reviews after I finished. But near the end, I was like, why am I not enjoying this? So I picked up on the fact that the affair, not for me. And yeah, the fact that I just didn't like the characters. Three stars, again, a bit of a disappointment. I thought this would be one of the best reads of the month and it just wasn't. So those are the seven books that I read in February. Obviously, I can't wait to get into A Tempest of Tea later in March when I get my hands on a copy of it. And other than that, I just really hope that in March I can get a five star read because, as I said, it was just such a weird month just liking everything but not loving it. It's a bit of a shame. Anyway, let me know what you've been up to this month, if you've read any of these, what you've read, if you've read any five stars, please let me know what they are, because at this point of the year, I have one five star out of 15 books read. That was Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Everesto that I read in January, and I'm desperate for a five star right now. I really need to read a five star. So let me know if you've got anything that you think that I will just absolutely love. Let me know. Other than that, as normal, if you'd like to support me, please think about liking the video. It really does help. Subscribe if you want to see more from me. I will leave affiliate links for all of the books down in the description below. So that's a way that it costs you no extra if you want to buy the books, but I make a small commission off the sale. So it always helps me out. Otherwise, I hope that you're well. I hope that you have a good rest of your day, wherever you are, whatever you're up to. And I will see you all next time. Bye.